usajidwa haba tu kupasirani interview imene Brian Banda anajeza ndi Profesa Peter Mutalika. Maga maga kukambirana kumasu kubunikila kumasu kumfusa mafuso ena amene andambiri akugamba okuza convention yao imene analinayo kuyambira pa 18 August 2024 mkulegira pa 19 August 2024 Convention ya DBB imene imajitika uh, sabada ya tai ndipo Brian Banda anacheza ndi Professor Arthur Mutarika Modere Arthur Peter Mutarika President of the Democratic Progressive Party and now a candidate after the convention of 2024 endorsed him as the candidate of the party for the 2025 election. His Excellency President Mutarika served this country for six years. I'm profoundly honored to host him yet again in this edition of the program. Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us and welcome. You're welcome. Let me welcome you again. It's, always a, pleasure. Again so, so, it's always a pleasure. To to <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be here. Good. And we look forward to this candid and conversation. It's always a pleasure to have you here too. We have just finished a <clears throat> convention where the party endorsed you yes. as its candidate for 2025. Yes. Why did you not have anyone competing with you? Um, that's interesting. I don't know why. Uh, obviously, we made it very, very clear that every position in the party was open. Uh, but as you know, about uh, 24 positions were, were not contested for. I, I don't know why, I, I can't explain that. But uh, it, was, it wasn't only my position, but 23 other positions that also were not contested. So I don't know the reason for that. Is, is it not your own making? Uh, because before there were people who were aspiring right. to be candidates Correct. Uh, for this particular party. Correct. Is it not your own making that those people were frustrated and they gave up those ambitions? I don't know. What comes to my mind is Bright in Saka uh -huh. uh, and others, uh, and others. Veka, George Shaponda yeah, and yeah, others yeah. who were almost campaigning to be right. uh, the torch bearer for the party. That's right. They were campaigning. They were. Um, until the time when I, I finally agreed Uh, that, uh, that I was going to stand after, as you know, there were those uh, requests from people for over a year. Uh, then I finally agreed that I was going to stand. And that's what happened. So it may well be uh, when I said that uh, I was going to stand, uh, the other people may be decided that they were not going to challenge me. But I never asked them to withdraw. And they never withdrew from the race. So I was very surprised myself. Uh, to see that nobody came forward to contest, to challenge me. Do you think there is anyone in the party who can be bold enough to stand against you? Uh, I don't see why not. Because uh, people regard you as the father yes. in the party. In other words, people fear you. Yes. And that's why people chickened out uh -huh. when they saw that you, you, you were running. Well, I very much appreciate that the, the party uh, views me that way, uh, as their father, the father of the party, uh, and somebody who has uh, nourished the party. I appreciate that very much. I'm very, very grateful uh, that the party so has confidence in me. Uh, I've been leader of this party now for 12 years, uh, and they, they have supported me. This is my third election. Uh, as a president of the party, 2014, 2018, and now 2024. I'm very grateful, uh, as I said at the convention, yes, I, I am, I really am. Yeah. The convention was held under the theme, a return to proved leadership. Mm -hmm. Which leadership? Leadership of the party, of the DPP, our leadership, the leadership we have demonstrated, since 2005, uh, you know, all the four elections in the past and uh, how our government managed uh, 
2009 to, to 2012, and then 2014 to 2020. That's the leaders we are talking about, uh, people-centered leadership, uh, leadership with a sense of direction, and I think a leadership that was uh, trying to build this country and make it move forward. I think that's what we are talking about, that we need to go back to that kind of leadership. Uh, which is foresighted and has a sense of direction. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, but you, we, we, you and me, we have talked about that kind of leadership, that yes. there were reservations. Right. There were things that were not done properly. Yes. The people of this country went on the streets demonstrating against your leadership. And you want people to go back to that kind of leadership? That's why, that's why I ask, what kind of leadership are you referring to? But it wasn't the people. Uh, the people voted for us overwhelmingly. Uh, we got almost 40% of the votes. Uh, we defeated everybody, including my Congress Party, UTM and the others. So, so the people were, were supporting us. Uh, that is in 2018. What I talk about the, the demonstrations, it was simply the work of uh, uh, some people. My Congress party, of course, through the HRI, HRIDC, yeah. the Ntambos, the Trappings, the Sembereka, and those kinds of people. They are the ones who started the campaign, a vicious campaign, uh, against the Chappes, you know, the My Electoral Commission. Of course, it, that was a ruse. They really demonstrated against me, not against Jane Ansa. They said that it wasn't the people, um, but they managed to manipulate the people. Uh, so it's not right to say that all the people in this country were against me and the DPP. I don't think so. I really don't. There were things that people of this country were not comfortable yes. under your leadership. Okay. Like what? Uh, we, 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 we have talked about it. Corruption. Yeah. Uh, impunity of all sorts. Mm -hmm. we, we, we talked about this in our earlier interviews. Before, but you see, as I said last time, yeah. where is the corruption? They have investigated us, all of us, uh, for four years. They haven't found any single one case of corruption. Why have, haven't they prosecuted us if, in fact, we were corrupt? So you, your government was not corrupt? No, it wasn't. That's what I know. It wasn't. So, so can, can you find any cases of corruption? Can you think of any yourself? Yes. Which one? The cement gate, for example. The was cement case had nothing to do with corruption. A cement case was not corruption. Uh, do you know what corruption is? It's corruption is getting a benefit of some kind in return for some kind of favor. That's corruption. Uh, the cement thing, uh, we have gone through this before. Yes. Uh, and you have seen the, the paper yesterday uh, that they have not withdrawn the case against the Chunaras, uh, the two Asian business people who are importing cement. Um, I, 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 that was a case, obviously. Uh, these people took advantage and used my uh, tipping tax identification number without my knowledge to order that cement. I don't think that's necessarily corruption. I, I think it's more of a, 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 a breach of the law, really. You know, so it, it or, or, or evading, uh, evading taxes, tax evasion. Uh, I think that's what it was. And it said in, it was on my part. It was them. I, I not, as you all know, I had nothing to do with it. So I don't know why you, you people keep on saying that the, the cement case was an example of corruption. Uh, find a better case. You can't find a better one. You should find a better case? Yeah, find a better case. So all those people who are saying that your government was corrupt, they yeah. may not have evidence? Is that what you're saying? They, they don't have any evidence. Because the ASB, ASB, ASB investigated us, uh, investigated all, all, all these years, and they found nothing. Nothing. So why were your accounts closed then? That's what I don't understand why. I don't know why they were closed, because there was absolutely no connection between my accounts and the importation of cement. I didn't order the cement, I didn't pay for it. Um, I, 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 there was absolutely no connection. I, I think it was simply abuse of, abuse of power. It was. They finally uh, unfroze them. 
There was absolutely no connection whatsoever uh, between the cement and my account. All the money in my account was uh, legitimately earned. So it, it was an abuse of power. That's what it was. You, you and irresponsible on the part of the SCB. So, so, it, it, so you want to tell us that you run a clean government? Yes, as far as I know. Yes. As far as you know. As far as I know. Now, if there are some individuals who, who have been corrupt, I have no idea. As we discussed last time, yeah. I cannot oversee everybody in the government. There are so many people under you, ministers, civil servants, parastators, all sorts of people, part of our administration. I cannot know what everyone is doing. But as far as I'm concerned, I was not engaged in, in, in corruption. And my government, as far as I know, my ministers and others were not involved in corruption. There were so well, many have not been able to. There were so many, so many stories uh -huh. corrupt in nature, published okay. by the Times and okay. other okay. newspapers. Like which, uh, one? like which one? There, there were so many. So 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 many. Uh, but you know the, the Times. Yeah. You know the Times, so you people the Times. Yes. We want a vicious campaign against me and the DBP. I think you were working for somebody else. I think you're working for the, maybe the Malay Congress Party or opposition. So you had all those stories, which are complete nonsense. You remember the story about the seven rotten ministers? Yes. Remember? Yes. That was manufactured by someone from Times. Someone from Times, I, I won't mention his name. Okay. But someone from Times, a vicious person, he's the one who manufactured that there were seven rotten ministers. There was none. They never found any seven rotten who, ministers. Who, who, who was manufacturing this? Somebody, uh, somebody from, from, from Times. I'm, I think you know who it is. No, I don't know. Well, for, for, for those that are watching us, find you, out. You, you, find you, out. Better, you better, you, find, you better, you better find, mention. Find you better, out. You, the story came from somebody from Times, from your organization. Yeah, but you know about the yeah. seven corrupt ministers, seven rotten ministers. That's the term they use. Yes, yes. It came from your organization. But the Times group is a very professional media institution uh -huh. and, and 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 to level those allegations against uh -huh. times yes. it may not be fair your excellency uh, not allegations that i'm saying that the st story comes there okay do you remember the hot current yes do you remember what, what times was doing yes it is one of the most vicious one of the most vicious programs in this country everyone knows that Totally unjustified. I think you own it sometimes also. You yes. own that program. Yes, yes. Or, or yes. Totally unfair. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So do you have a person in, in, in mind who could have been against you? I have no idea. But I'm just so surprised that yes. uh, they, they, all these things were coming from the Times, not from the nation. Okay. The nation was not attacking me as much as you people in the Times were doing. I don't know why. Maybe they were, they were grudge against me. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. But that's what happened there. So all those st stories, were, we, we want to close on that matter. We are not true. Which, which stories? For example, the one that you have referred to. About the seven rotten ministers? Yes. Of course they're not true. Okay. For the, we asked them to name the, the seven rotten ministers. They never did. And it turned out it, it, it was false. It was just purely something that was fabricated. But I just also wanted to put it on record that yes. Times is a independent professional media institution, yes. it doesn't get orders from anyone. We, we just want, I just want to put that on the record. You might have maybe an issue with someone yes. who worked at the Times, okay. who probably did not like you, yes. but I, I think we, sh we, we, we wanted to separate that. Okay. I'm glad you're professional. I think it's getting better now. <laughs> uh, I think it's better, better than that time. Yeah. Certainly, I cannot say the hot current was not professional. It was absolutely, uh, if ever there was something unprofessional, it was that program, Hot Current. Okay. Which you were on that program at, at some point. It was completely un unprofessional. Okay. So now I'm glad that you are now becoming more professional, and I want to congratulate you for that. Thank you very much. At there You're now we are, we are now speaking the same language. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about uh, uh, Jen Ansa, the former chair of the Malawi Electoral mm. Commission. Yes. Despite the cause at that particular time that she should resign, yeah. you insisted that she should not resign. Correct. Years later, uh -huh. she appears at your national convention uh -huh. claiming to be a member of your party. Oh, I, see. I didn't know that. Okay. 
we, we talked to her at the convention. Oh, really? And she said that she's now a member of the Democratic Progressive Party. She oh. joined the party three months ago. Oh. And she's running for a member of parliament in Incheo. Yeah, that, do, that part I know. Yeah. Yes. Do, do, do you think it's a proper thing to do, considering where we are coming from? To, to do what? To, to be partisan. I don't understand. What do you mean? The question is... Who is being part of Jenny Jenny answer. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you have to ask her. I, don't I, I wanted to hear your views no, on no, the don't, same. Don't ask me. I did, can't, I can't did, speak for Did her. she come to you to say she wants to join the no, Democratic she, Progressive she, Party? She, she didn't. In fact, I, I, this is the first time I'm hearing that uh, she has joined the DPP. Uh, I was aware of that. We invited her as a former chair of the Malawi Electoral Commission, uh, that's why she was invited in that capacity. As former chair of the commission, just like we invited the diplomats, people from the faith community, uh, from CSOs, uh, and other political parties. So she invited in that capacity, not as a candidate for parliament. And uh, I was, this is the first time I'm hearing that she has actually joined the the DPP? She told me that oh, okay. she has joined the DPP. Oh, okay. But do you think the optics are looking right, considering where we are coming from? Would people be correct to say that she favored uh, DPP in those elections? Well, she was a member then. She has joined the party now. Uh, as, as I just said, she was a member of the DPP then. So how could she favor the DPP? It's a question that I wanted you to answer. No, no, no. I, I'm saying, how is how do you see favor the DPP? I don't understand yeah. the question. The, the, the question is very clear. Uh -huh. This is someone who yes. was a referee yes. in an election. Yes. Five years later, she declares yes. that she's a member of your party. Did you benefit in any way from her as chair of the Malawi Electoral Commission? Oh, of course not. Uh, uh, obviously, she was not a member of the political party. Uh, our party, but it's, people do, do, do change. You have people who are one time uh, ministers and preachers or clergymen and they decide to go into politics. We have people who have been judges and they decide to go into politics. We have people who are academics or business people, they decide to go into politics. Those are personal decisions uh, people make about their own lives. I, I don't see what the problem is. I, I just don't say. Um, I think I've got you completely wrong uh, uh, to even uh, uh, surmise or imply uh, that there's something wrong about somebody changing their career uh, into another one if they want to, to save, in order to save this country. I, I don't see what's wrong with that at all. I really don't. We saw the presence of the United Democratic Front, mm -hmm. UTM, and AFOD. Mm -hmm at the convention. Yeah. What should we read? Us watching from a distance. No, we just invited them. We invited all political parties, uh, and we invited uh, various groups. We invited the, the churches, Catholic Church. We invited civil society organizations. Uh, we invited the diplomatic community. We invited all, all the people. They're all part of my Malawi uh, uh, political structure. Uh, uh, and we invited them to witness what we're doing, that's all. And we have done that before, actually. This, this is the first time. It's not very normal. It happens elsewhere. <clears throat> it's just in this country uh, that people see that when there are different political parties, you see each other as enemies, not competitors. So that's a problem. We want to get over that. Yeah, that uh, so we invited all political parties. In your speech, Your Excellency, yeah. you said that President Chakwera and his government have failed, and you quoted a verse in the Bible, and that his kingdom is going to be divided by these yeah. three or four political parties. Mm -hmm. What point were you driving home? What point was I what? What point were you driving home? No, I, I was quoting the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, that um, um, I'm very fond of that uh, particular one, uh, um, uh, Daniel 5, verse 25. And then it says there, yeah. in the end, yeah. uh, it says that your, your kingdom will be divided 
between the Meds and the Persians. Yeah. I made India mm -hmm. in Kikewa. Yeah. So what, what I was saying was that to complete the narrative, that's why I say that uh, after that your kingdom has failed, my stop on my son, yeah. Apakadipa, DPP, UDF. The moment I put it, as a narrative, I'm going to get a banner, but in the man is a vessel. Yeah. That's all. There was no implication. My food in my vessel, good enough. Narrative in Saimisia, by Bidom Kumapeto. Okay. Could you find Loga Uzaga with her? Pacadipa, um, DPP, MCP, no, I'm sorry, DPP, UDF. Uh, at Afford and UTM. That, that, that was all really. There, there was nothing to it really. N not the Kuti Mu Kambirana. No. This one is one is. No. No. Uh, as, as I told last time, no. As I told last time that we, uh, we, we, are, we even the other political parties, uh, I've, I've said the same. I, I know Mr. Chihan has said that they, they, they are going on their own. Uh, I think UDF has said the same thing. I know UTM last week, I think the a publicity secretary there uh, said the same thing that they are going on their own uh, um, uh, at the moment uh, that they have no intention or they have no thoughts of actually uh, partnering with someone else uh, and we have said the same thing uh, because we know uh, according to our survey uh, that's a very professional survey uh, that if elections were held today with all the political parties uh, would get about, um, I think it's 57.9%. The Democratic Progressive Party. The DPP on its own, yeah. And this is a very credible sur survey, then done by really, really serious professionals. That's what's on, on the ground there. And I believe it's accurate. So we, we can, in fact, win on our own. Uh, whether there will be alliances or not, that's, that's for the future. We'll see the campaign hasn't even started. Some of these parties have not even had con con conventions. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, the, the parties in opposition except us. The others haven't yet had their conventions. Yeah. So we'll see what kind of leadership comes out uh, of those conventions and then what their thoughts are uh, about the possible cooperation and alliances and so forth. You know, in 2020, uh, we partnered with UDF, you remember that? Yeah. So, you know, it depends on the dynamics at a given time, uh, whether you should partner and who you should partner with, and on what conditions. All those are things that you, you have to, to decide as the political landscape um, develops uh, in the next uh, several months. You came on that podium during the convention, yeah. energetic, yes. full of confidence, yes. that you win 2025 polls. Correct. Where are you getting that confidence? I'm getting the confidence because uh, uh, I, I think over a record, uh, I think people know uh, the, the kind of problems that the country is facing. Uh, the country is also moved towards self-destruction. It's there. It's, it's obvious. You know, the, the hunger, the bad economy, the poverty, all those things. The oppression that's taking place now. Uh, the violence, uh, all those kinds of things. Um, I don't think that's what Malawians want, really. Uh, I think what Malawians wanted in 1994, 93, 94, uh, when they opted for more party democracy, that's not being reversed. It's clear it's not being reversed. I don't think Malawians want to go back to the 31 years of one, or one person or one party rule. Um, I don't think so. Malawians who chose freedom, uh, personal liberty, democracy, uh, and economic justice. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, that's what Malawians opt. So we'll, we'll tell our story. We'll go to the people. We'll explain to them uh, what our agenda is, uh, and our thoughts about this country, and what our record was, and let make, make a choice. Uh, if they make the same bad choice as they did before, that's too bad. Uh, it, it, it's upon them. But uh, I assume that after what people have gone through in the last four years, this time, I think people have got, grown wiser, I think. And I think they have worked wisely and responsibly. Uh, 
than they did last time in 2020. Oh, but I an urgent matter. complete the assignment that I had, uh, and then I gave my speech. And as a speaker, But that's what it was. Uh, I, I don't really know why uh, people, and it's not uh, our people DBP. Most of the people from the other side, I don't know why they're so concerned about it. Uh, makes it a, a big thing. Is there a law that you, if, you, if you open a conference, you must close it? Can't you ask somebody? Can't you delegate somebody? Yeah, this, this was one of your most important functions. It was. Where the candidates, yes. uh, where the, 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 the party was endorsing you Correct. as its torchbearer. Correct. And suddenly, there, were, there was no better or other important functions than to be at this I don't think so. I, I'm telling you that there was an emergency. Um, what emergency? I, 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 I can't tell that. You can't tell us? I, I don't have to tell that. Well, no, do I have to tell anybody in this country? But you can tell me. No, no, not at all. You can't tell me? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, because skipping, you, are, you, are, you, skipping. Have no, you have no right to yeah. it. Okay. <clears throat> There's no way... I, I don't owe you any explanation. What about your what, what, what about your followers, the DPP followers yeah. who were waiting for you on that Monday yeah. at Comesa Hall to close your very own convention? Oh, they were waiting for me? Yes, because the program showed that you would come and close the function. That's right. And you didn't show up. That, that's right. As yeah. I've told before that um, I was uh, the chairman released me, uh, I think about five o'clock. We waited, uh, they, st they were going to vote, they started about 3 o'clock, by, by 5 o'clock they had not even started yet. Yes. Um, and it looked like it was, going to, it was going to take a very long time, so the chairman um, asked me that maybe it was important that uh, I leave, and they would call me later when they were, they were, they were completed. Yeah. Um, and so it went on until very, very late, and then by the time he called me, I, I think it was like 4 or 5 in the morning, uh, there was another matter that was involved. So I told the chairman that, uh, look, we have this stretch, can I delegate you to do this? And the chairman said yes. Uh, and he did that. But that's all. But if yeah, somebody but doesn't like it, it's too bad, I'm sorry. But I'm not going to apologize to anybody. Because there was a, an important matter. And this is such a trivial matter to begin with anyway. It's pettiness. The trouble in this country, Brian. Yes. Is that we dwell so much on petty things, on petty things, things that don't really matter. I don't think it matters whether somebody closes a meeting or not, or whether somebody delegates a meeting or not. People delegate things. The president delegates even important things, uh, trips and those kinds. It happens all the time elsewhere in the world. It's only in this country. It's only in this country. Whatever somebody does is a problem. Simple things are magnified. Uh, trivial things are uh, magnified. I, I think so. We are wasting so much time on trivia. And this thing is so trivial. And nobody in the DPP is complaining about this. Nobody. Not a single person. It's only people from outside. People like yourself and all those other people out there. No, my, my, my job my job is uh -huh. to ask questions. I'm not I'm not complaining. Well, you you seem to feel like <laughs> maybe you want no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not your excellency, I'm not I'm I'm not I'm not involved. But I'm just saying I'm uh -huh. just saying they yeah. it, it didn't look right. No, I, that I, this I, I, this was this I, was your, I don't this was your so. you know, you let, know let, let me finish. You know what this this was trivial. Yeah. I, I think let's close the discussion. Because it, it's very really trivial. This thing is very trivial. It, it, it's pointless. It's pointless. I delegated, and I have a right to delegate any function. When I was president, I was delegating some very important functions. I was delegating important functions. And this one I delegated to the chairman, who is a very, very able person, and he ably closed the convention. Everyone was very happy about it. A vote of thanks was given. So I don't know what your problem and what other people is. I, 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 I think you should, you should not include no, me. I, I it's not my problem. problem. <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, I, I, we, we'll leave it there, as, you, as you have rightly but, said. And but I, I think let's put it right, yeah. sir. And let's not bring it about again. We are not going to bring uh, it again. Be, because it's, 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 I think it's, it's, it's a waste of time. It, it, it is. We had a very important convention, very successful. And I think some people are trying to despite the convention by bringing all these kind of, you know, silly things and, and, and so forth. Um, I don't know why. Uh, people are unhappy. I think people are unhappy because they thought that we would not be able to, to do a convention. And this, to, for me, is the best convention in our party. I've ever attended our 35 conventions starting in 2004. This was by far the best convention. It was very successful. And that's what happened. So let's not spoil it by bringing, you know, trivial things like the fact that I delegated the closing to somebody else. It's a trivial matter. So let's let's put it aside. We'll put it aside. Very good. And allow us to take a short break. Very good. All right. Thank so, you very much. In you. case you're just joining us, <laughs> this is Times Exclusive, airing on Times Network. Tonight, I'm joined by His Excellency Professor Arthur Peter Mutarika, former president of the Republic of Malawi, and president of the Democratic Progressive Party, who has just been endorsed by the 2024 uh, convention to be the torchbearer for the party for the coming 2025 polls. Tonight, the program is coming to you, KTSA of Rainbow Pens. We'll hear from them and we'll continue thereafter my conversation with His Excellency Professor Arthur Peter Mutarika. And our final part for the conversation that I'm having tonight uh, with His Excellency Professor Arthur Peter Mutarika, former president of the Republic of Malawi and DPP torchbearer for the 2024 presidential elections. Welcome back, Your Excellency. Thank you. There are others out there still worried that at 84, you may find the campaign tiring. Mm -hmm. We have discussed this before. I know. But yeah. this issue keeps on coming. I know. What assurances would you give me and the people watching us tonight yeah. that you are up to the game in as far as campaigning is concerned? Now, first let me say that this concern is uh, coming from our enemies. Not our party. The party, they know that I'm 84 years old, and they still ask me to come back. You know the whole story the past yeah, year. Yeah. Uh, they knew that. So the people who are saying this are not people from DPP. It's people from the opposite camp, uh, simply because they're afraid of my candidacy. That's what all it's, it's all about. They're afraid of that. Um, so let me say that. Now, coming back to assure people, well, Obviously, I cannot assure people about the future. Yeah. Nobody knows what will happen five minutes from now. Yeah. All of us could drop dead five minutes from now. Yeah. Uh, so, but as I told you last time, at the moment I feel very strong. I have absolutely no problem. Why do you uh, think? Physically and mentally, I have absolutely no problem. I can compete with anybody, physically and mentally, anybody uh, of any age. Uh, so I feel fine. Uh, but what, what the future brings, I don't know. As I said to you before, um, at the Page House, that if I reach a point, a point where I know that I cannot physically or mentally uh, uh, do a campaign or run the government, I'll resign. As I said before, I have absolutely no intention of embarrassing myself or my family. Absolutely no intention. I will discuss all these things with my family, and they all agree to support me, but I have absolutely no intention of um, uh, embarrassing myself if I feel I cannot do it. I agreed to do it, I, I thought through very clearly and I was convinced that I can do it. I didn't say I feel very strong as I did before, uh, both physically and mentally. Uh, so I really have no problem. But you know, on this age thing, um, have you heard of somebody called um, uh, Lucius Secretarius Cisnatus? Have you heard of that person? No. I've never heard of him. Uh, he was a um, uh, Roman general mm -hmm. in 1458 BC. Uh, at that time, Roma was under severe attack from enemies, and Rome 
Then it was a republic, and Rome was about to be destroyed. All the generals, all the young generals, failed. They could not defend Rome. So the people, the Senate, passed a resolution and invited this gentleman, uh, Lucius Cimeterius Cincinnatus, who was a retired farmer outside Rome. Uh, he came, agreed, took over the army, and within 16 days, Rome was saved. The enemy was defeated. 16 days. Uh, they have been, the other generals have been fighting for four years. Mm -hmm. For 16 days, he defended Rome. And the people were so grateful that they wanted to make him a dictator. He refused. He went back to, 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 to his farm. Do you know how old he was? He was 89. He was 89 years old. You can check it. You can Google it. So you are our own assassinator. <laughs> That's right. So what I'm saying, yes. what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, each person is different. Uh, each person is different. Um, and obviously this man was able to do what the younger generals could not do because of his physical and mental abilities. So it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. In any event, I don't really understand. Uh, why the people in the other camp? Because it's other people in the other camp. Okay. Because my party asked me to come back and endorse me. So there's no problems with that. It's the opposition, uh, the from my Congress party, uh, who are studying this kind of thing. You see some of the writings by some of the hired people. You saw the articles in Yasa, Yasa Times and so on. You see, uh, it's them. Now, why are they so concerned about it? Why are they so concerned about my age? Why? Because at 84, yes. pre the, the, United, uh, the, the president of the United States, yes. Joe Biden, yes. has given up and he's only 83. That's right. He has given up because obviously I think there are some problems there. Okay. Uh, but what I would ask you is why are they so concerned about Because the people, my supporters, yeah. the people in the DPP are not concerned. But it's the people in the opposite, opposite camp who are concerned about my age. Why? What's their problem? Since when were they concerned about my welfare? Since when? Mm. They've never wished me well before. Why are they so concerned about me now? It's simply because they don't want me in the race. Because they know I get in there, they're out. I can assure you this. We'll confirm this in September, on September 17th. I'm in that race, they're out. They'll be defeated. I can assure you that. And they know it. They know it? Oh, yes, they know. Oh, they know. That's what I took, tried to do all this rigging and so forth with Mambo Jambo registration nonsense they're doing now. That's the only way they can win. Because they know straight fight, they can't win. Never. They can't win. And in four fights, I've beaten them 2014, 2016, uh, 2018, 2020. Me and MCB, I've beaten them each time by over five percent margin and they know it and nothing has changed so it's a rules to simply discredit me and try to run me out of the race if they think they can intimidate me they don't know me they don't know apm i'm sorry people mistreat apm they don't know me nobody can intimidate me or run me out of out of this race never so they better they're wasting the time you know, they, they better shut up uh, and stop talking about it because I'm not going to pay any attention uh, to them and my party is not going to pay any, any attention to them. So they're wasting their time. Let's talk about uh, the <clears throat> succession. Yeah. Do we have DPP in the absence of APM? Yes. We do? Yes. Okay. Of course. Of course. You saw the elections uh, last week. You were there. Yes. You saw the enthusiasm. You saw all those people competing from all those positions, except those that were not contested. But you saw people there. Enthusiastic. That's the DBP. DBP is all those people there. The governors, the uh, regional people, and the ordinary people, and the others who competed for various positions. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, DPP, that DPP can exist in and has always existed without APM or the Mutharikas.
because it has always been led by the Motaricas. Well, uh, up, uh, so far, yeah. 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 So, so That's far. why I'm asking, that do yeah. we have the DPP without the Motaricas? I think so. Okay. And what are you doing? I think you, so. you, you told the convention that this is your last convention. Correct. What are you doing in grooming your successor? And um, who have you earmarked? <clears throat> do you think we have to groom our successor? I mean, this is not, this is not a, 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 a kingship. This is not a monarchy. Uh, it's a democracy. Okay. You can't groom a person. No. You might have a preferred no. candidate. Pe people, I don't. I don't. <clears throat> you don't? Uh, no, no, I don't. Uh, people will develop and they'll compete and the best person will be selected. That's how it works. You don't groom somebody. I, I, or, thought, or I, thought, impose I, thought, somebody. I thought your late brother groomed you to no, be the, 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 the president of this party. No, no, no. Or he earmarked you uh, for lack I, of a better I don't way. Think so. I don't think so. He gave you no. leeway uh, to. In what way? You were the favored ones. That time there was Joyce Banda, there were others. Uh -huh. You know the story. You were favored to be, in, in to what, be the leader. In, in what way? In what you way? know what I'm talking about. You see, when, when, when my brother died, yeah. <clears throat> you know, there was an NGC meeting. Yeah. There were several candidates there, and the NGC unanimously selected me as acting president. Okay? Then we went to the convention um, in April 2014, and I competed uh, with Honorable Chimutu Banda. And I defeated him. That's what happened. It all just hand over to me. Uh, there was competition both at the NGC level and also at the um, at, at the convention uh, in 2014. Uh, and then I, I was slightly present. Now in 2018, uh, there was no competitor, uh, and in 2024, there was no competitor. Yeah. But there have been a competition before. In the past, there has been competition. Yeah, but I'm so talking... it's not like would you uh, just put me there uh, and, 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 say, and say that select this person. When I competed, the the former president was already dead. He wasn't there. He was already dead. Yeah, but when he was alive, he had given you an upper hand. In what way? In 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 in, in, in making sure that you are more visible no, think, and, and ready I, for I don't think so. He merely appointed me a minister, that's all. That's all what he did? Yeah, that's what he, what, what he did. Okay. He appointed me a minister. Uh, before that, I was a legal advisor. Um, I appointed me a minister, like everybody else, and that was all. You have told President Chakwera mm. to pack and go. Yes. That's to use your own words. Okay. What has he done wrong, and what are you going to do? How, what things are, are you going to do differently? Well, what we have done wrong is, I think, to mismanage the country, uh, the, the economy, uh, and, and, and do everything else we have discussed before. Uh, the poverty is increasing in this country. Uh, only 90%, 9% of the people are employed, 91% unemployment in, in this country, um, and all the suffering, uh, and of course, uh, uh, lack of democracy, taking the country back to the one-party system, and, that, and the oppression that's happening. People are afraid now to say things. People are afraid to say things. People are afraid we cannot campaign in the, in the central region. Without being attacked, each time we go, we are attacked. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, we sent our people to collect some vehicles um, that belong to the DPP for those people who left the DPP. And remember the attack at Mbawe. So it's this whole atmosphere that has been created by the uh, act of violence and creating fear that has been created by this administration. Uh, that's very tr troubling. Uh, and as I said at the convention there, uh, that um, I go to the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, Malawians are the saddest people. Don't move this like Sonic one, so I just Sonic one be. People are very happy here. In the index, my saddest country in the world. Now, it's a job of the people to create conditions that will make people happy. 
That's why in the American Declaration of Independence, 1776, remember they say three things, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are key elements that government must pursue. Life, property life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Make sure that you create conditions which make people have a happy life. That's the job of the government to do that. The government has failed to do that in this country. People are unhappy in this country. Very, very unhappy, very sad. Uh, and that's what we need to change to get away from that. Well, there are so many things I've said. The economy has got to be recharged. Now, and I know the government has adopted the so-called ATM strategy, uh, which is agriculture, transport, uh, uh, and the mining. That's good, that's commendable, but they've completely ignored manufacturing. Industrialization, no country can develop without industrialization. If they drink the Industrial Revolution, we started in England in the 16th century. They, they started using the rivers and so forth, put pumps there, create things, fertilizer, use their seams and all those things uh, to develop the country, create, manufacture things, make things. Well, we've got to start making things in this country for export. You see, because the mining, agriculture, all those things we're going to be doing, they're very much import intensive. They depend on importing out of things. You now, we need to counteract that by beginning to manufacture things. So we, we, need, we need exporting. Um, uh, we need to look at um, re restructuring the debt. The debt is unacceptable. Uh, when we left in six years, my government incurred a debt of 2.6 trillion in six years. This we went four years, 18 trillion. The debt is unmanageable, cannot be managed, cannot be sustained. So the government needs to find a way of in fact restructuring that and managing that debt. So that's, that's, that's one aspect. But also look at our resources in this country. The lake, for example, Lake Malawi. Lake Malawi had 400 different species of fish. More than any other country in the world. Everything is here. Tuna, fish, salmon, mackerel, scrod, crawfish, whatever, it's here. Salmon, uh, everything is in here, uh, in, in this country. Uh, what we need is, in fact, to, to develop, um, find a way to develop your fisheries industry. Develop so that we can fish some of these fish. Some of it is underground, you can't reach it, down to the bottom of the ocean, like scrawled and so forth. Tuna, those normally at the bottom of the ocean. We need to find, import technology and so forth to get that fish out. Now, with the kind of fishing uh, we have in this country, the amount of fish, we can export to the rest of the world and make a lot of money, a lot of forex. Mm -hmm. Now, we're exporting fish from Zambia, exporting fish uh, from other countries. We have no business exporting fish. We we'll have more fish here uh, in the lake than any other country in the world. We cannot do that. We are simply have got milk. The other day I found milk being imported. We have livestock in this country. Why can't we? use the cows and the goats in this country, milk them and turn that milk and add value and export some of it, or at least not have to import milk to this country. Uh, so those are the things I've got to do. I'm talking about the lake. The, the lake is the greatest resource in the world. And we can do so much uh, in this country if we can utilize this lake properly, invest in the lake activities, sporting, all sorts of activities on the lake. And that will bring out of people. So, so what I'm saying, we need, we need to think, uh, uh, look at, um, at the, um, our economic policies very, very carefully, uh, our fiscal policy. Uh, and finally, I'm um, saying about uh, cutting spending also, in addition to borrowing so much, we need to cut spending in a very serious way. Uh, as we did during my time, we need to cut spending. We can save a lot of money. We need to, uh, to stop wasting resources like useless trips, both international and domestic, both consumer out of forex. 
even the domestic ones, are some out of forex because they are using fuel, uh, and that fuel is being imported, and it's forex. Uh, uh, so we, we need to do that, uh, and I think we need to get away, uh, especially on, on the import thing, start manufacturing, for example, fertilizer, cement. We should be able to do those in this country. It's only importing, but they're very expensive. But why import. didn't you do it? all these things you're talking about when we, you were in power? We started. We you started? started? Oh, yes, yes, we started. We started negotiations. I personally met him, Mr. Dangote. I personally met him at St. James Palace in London. We had about 30 minute discussion. I want to bring him here uh, to come and invest in this country in cement. We started negotiations. Uh, so it's not, well, and when they fertilized, we started negotiations with the governments, various governments in Morocco. Uh, you know, there was so much stuff there in the Sahara part of it, the Spanish Sahara part of it. Uh, and we started negotiations. Uh, we're talking with the, with the Taiwanese on fertilizer since Bengal's time. Uh, so, but these things take time. But we started, what I'm saying is we need to start. I'm not saying that these things can be done instantly. Of course not. It takes time. You need to find funding and so forth. What is but, but we started yeah. in that direction. That's what I'm saying. We're going to start going in that direction. That's what I'm saying. What is your view on the fertilizer subsidy? Well, you know, you know, it's a good program. You remember it was started during our time. Yeah. And, and in fact, I was in the room at Intutama Lodge when we discussed it with Bingo, Guru Gondo, and myself. Okay. Um, that, that was, um, I think, it was August 2014. Uh, so we discussed this because how can we end hunger? Uh, so we said, okay, let's talk about subsidy. Now the idea was that this ought to be a temporary measure. That the people who get subsidy, they'll grow enough maize uh, so that they'll be able to have some to sell and save money and they can use that money the following year to buy fertilizer. It only meant to be a perpetual program yeah. for these individuals. That's how we started it. Now it's a very expensive program. Um, it's difficult. We have to find a way of uh, should people elect you managing. in 2025 yes. as our leader? Yes. Are you going to end it no. or run with it? No. Uh, we're, we're not. We're not planning to end it. We have never planned that way. Okay. You can see in our manifesto. But we'll, we'll look at it. Uh, for example, f finding it is very expensive. It's taking almost 80% of the budget of the Department of Agriculture. It's going to the input program. That's what I was talking about, fertilizer, actually starting a fertilizer plant in this country. That's why I was negotiating with all these people in all these countries. Uh, and what we'll do, I think, is to find a way, uh, to find a way of uh, said in local manufacturing, uh, fertilizer, that's one, one way. Uh, also move to other, other forms of inputs like manure. Before the fertilizer, we used manure all over this country. Uh, you may not know that because you, that's a long time ago. Uh, there was no fertilizer in those days. This fertilizer thing is very, very recent. We used to use manure and uh, natural forms of uh, adding, adding value to, 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 to the soil. Uh, so we have to look at all those things uh, and, and, and so forth. Uh, and uh, now in terms of the assistance, uh, there are other ways of doing it. Uh, um, maybe uh, to give cash to some people. Uh, and they can use that cash to, to buy their own inputs. Uh, there are also some alternative ways of doing it. Uh, but. Uh, no, we cannot, a subsidy is not, uh, is not a bad thing. All countries all over the world, the United States, it's the biggest subsidy of uh, farmers. I don't know if you knew that. Germany, Japan, heavy subsidy on their farmers. So it, it's not something that, that's wrong. Um, uh, of course, they have the resources we don't, but we have to find a way of modifying it uh, and maybe give some people just cash. Uh, and they can buy their own input, and the others encouraging better farming, and then they can earn more, and therefore they can use their earnings uh, beyond the food made for consumption. They want to sell, they can use their earnings to buy more inputs and so forth.
Uh, but the important thing is that we need to manufacture <coughs> fertilizer locally. We cannot continue to import it. We just don't have the money anymore. A minute ago, Marisa. Muna Danda wula kuti you are having difficulties in campaigning ku central region. Chifaja zibongwe zimene mugumala ndira. Right. Aren't you testing your own medicine? Inuso muni mboma. Sima aleta antwe na kuchita kampeni. Tima aleta antwe na kuchita kampeni. Sima Kuti. Anyamata IMCP sana menyedwe. Kuti. Kublanta, for example. Kuchua aweja kampeni. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. 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 I'm Twice could you put your bonera? Yeah. And I mean, I am a matter twice. But instead of arresting our, uh, the, those people, they arrested our, our, our people. We are going away. They know the people. They know the person who brought those, uh, those trucks. They wouldn't have the, the driver's license. They know the person. And yet they don't arrest that person. Up to now, they don't arrest those people. And this one last week, instead of ar arresting, the people who attack the people, we are sent to go to vehicles, they are less arresting the driver, we say. And later on, they release him. Now, um, I've said this before, Kuti, I, I think this is wrong. This has taken my data. Yeah, but Anyamata is one country. Anyamata no we DPP. all should be allowed to campaign wherever we want to campaign. Anyamata DPP, and I end up with the Mundizi Watch. But he's blind. Zachary is Zachary Zachary is Zachary is You are clinging to that in the background a long time ago. Zachary Zachary Just one incident. It was a long time ago before I even became president. Okay. I think it was 2009. Okay. Yeah. Entire campaign. Yeah. And we condemned that, remember? Okay. Even being condemned that. That was one incident. Okay. So, we saw Bia and Mimon and Sakakamine Ujin. That incident. But one of us here has not. I, I think that the, the idea of the violence, and stopping people from campaigning or threatening people, intimidating people, uh, is not a good one. And when the government decides not to arrest those people, that they know. In all those th three instances, they know two in Ponela and then the one at, at Mboe, hmm. they know the people. When but, are you? But they have decided not to arrest. Them. When are you kickstarting your 2025 campaign? I uh, I don't know. Um, you know, it's, it's a year now. I mean, you can, it's a year can, now. You can campaign for a year. Uh, in fact, actually, it's ironic because normally you don't have conventions this early. Okay. It's just the circumstances. Normally, we have conventions uh, when you have elections in May. Okay. We used to have conventions in April. Okay. Yeah, about 90 days before. Okay. And have a candidate, but to select somebody uh, a year or uh, before the election, it's it's it's. it's uh, it's, it's, it's not a, good, uh, 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 a, a very good thing in, in my view. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. Look at the Americans. They just have their convention now. They, in July, they had the Republicans. Mm. Uh, the Democrats are doing it now. Yeah. They're only 60 days before the election. So there are two months. Or on October and, and no, no, the election, the first, first Tuesday, November. Mm -hmm. So it's less than two months. Come if you come one year, I don't think it's sensible, but, but, but it does happen. Huh? Uh, exactly, exactly. It's, it's very expensive. Mm. Uh, it's a, going to be a very, very difficult situation. Uh, this has never happened before. Do you uh, have... But it has happened, so we'll just see how we manage it. Do you have the financial muscle to run a successful campaign? Yes. Where will you get, where will you get the money? Well, we get money from well wishes. And who are your well wishes? I, I, I can't tell you our well wishes. Huh? I can't tell you that. Uh, you can't tell me your well wishes? No, of course not. Uh, we, we, we get support like all other political parties, whether in here or in America. And we all do fundraising. Also, you notice we've done two fundraisers so far. We did one at the Mount Sage Hotel last, last year uh, in, in April, I remember. 
the night before Friday, uh, remember we did that and we did the last one on July 13th at Page House. So we are doing fundraising and we'll continue to do fundraising. And from that, and we also have a system we are asking people to send money uh, through um, TNM uh, and also through um, yeah, Airtel. Uh, and, and money is coming. So $20, $200, 500 People can send anything they can afford. So that's happened. So money is coming in. A lot of money is coming in now. You know, so we'll be able to finance the campaign. I have absolutely no doubt. You have no doubt. No, no. What, what do that? <clears throat> we wish we had more time. We have to leave Probably. it there. But what would be your concluding remarks to the supporters of your party? Uh, my supporters? Yes. Um, uh, first of all, I want to thank them very much. Uh, for and sure. Malawians in general. Uh, and Malawians. Yeah. My uh, supporters, uh, thank them very much for showing this confidence. To have given the opportunity to save this country before and now opportunity to save this country again. I'm very, very grateful. I feel blessed now for the rest of the country. Let me say that I, I think it's very important as we go to the election that we should sober up and do this um, for proper and not necessarily create tension. I tell you what, just as I was coming. Uh, and I've forwarded it to you. Yeah. Someone sent me a clip. The clip, the video, the about 10 girls, aged between four and six years old. And they're obviously from, from I think, I think from my central region. Uh, they, they are dancing, a certain kind of dance. I don't know whether it's in Ghana or whatever, but they clap hands and sort of go dance and come back and so forth in a circle. But anyway, so they are doing that. But listen to the words. Aguti, Atakwera, Abuino, Apita, Oipa. And these are six year olds, which means Chakwera is a good person, APM is a bad person. Obviously, somebody has sealed this into their brains. And these are four to six year olds. I sent you the clip. You, 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 you look at it, it's very sad. It is very sad uh, that we have reached that point in this country. I don't know who is behind it, uh, but I don't think any job of getting power is worth ruining, poisoning the minds of these small children. It's pathetic. And whoever has done this, shame on them, they better stop it. Uh, I think that brings disservice to this country. So, my last words is um, let's campaign peacefully, cordially. This sort of war is competition. And let the will of the people prevail. Whoever, whoever the people select, that people should govern. And also, let's stop this rigging process. You have seen the numbers, you have seen them sure come out today. Ridiculous. What has happened in the central region? Totally ridiculous. Uh, you know, raising 3,000 percent, and you go to show 12 percent, 20 percent. It's pathetic uh, that somebody is trying to destroy the democratic system by deliberately manipulating the figures, the registration <coughs> figures. And that's a shame. That's a shame. I think we need to stop this. Uh, need to stop this. I don't think any job. In, on earth. That's so important. That we have to reduce ourselves to this kind of behavior. So my last words on to my eyes would be, let's take a deep breath, calm down, and let's compete fairly and friendly. We're all Malawians. At the end of the day, we're all Malawians, yeah. and this is our country, and let's not ruin it. Thank you. Convention Imene Analinayo Gambira by 18 August Kufigira by 19 August Mujaga Jimenejija 2024.